Good morning. And those of you who follow my channel know that I've been on the hunt for some time now for a Xbox style controller for the PlayStation 4. And one of the reasons for that is because my boy much prefers the Xbox style controller. And I have to say, I also prefer the layout of the thumbsticks on the Xbox controller. And I started off by getting hold of the Brook adapter. This one here. And I have to say, this works really, really well. It works a lot better than I was expecting. So, uh, yeah, that's been good. And I've used it with <laughs> my Xbox Halo controller, which I thought was quite amusing to have a Halo controller controlling the PlayStation. And it all works really, really well. All the buttons work perfectly well. Thumbstick works well. Everything works brilliantly. Uh, even the touchpad on the PlayStation, you can kind of emulate it by pressing this button and then using the right thumbstick to do swipes. So even that works, although I haven't really used it for that because, uh, well, most games don't use it. My only real complaint was, I don't know if you can see that there, the fit's not exactly perfect. And I had to frig around. In my video of doing this, I showed how it was a bit of a pain to get this fitted. But once it's all fitted and up and running, it works perfectly well. And I'm quite pleased with it. But I did want an actual PlayStation controller. And, well, I had a look around and I had a look at the Scuff Vantage. And more recently, I've looked at the Astro Gaming C40. But the problem with those is they're only available in the US. And that would have meant that I would have had to import them. And then you get the issue of import duty and all that kind of nonsense. So then I moved on from there and I thought, well, I could maybe get them imported or I could even get my niece to buy it for me and send it over because she lives in the States at the moment. But that would be an issue because if I wanted to send it back because there were any problems or anything, you know the thing, you get problems with stuff like that. So I did have a look at the Razer Raiju Tournament Edition, which is available in this country. The problem there, though, is the Razer Raiju Tournament Edition has one big issue. And that is that if you want to use a wired headset with it, you have to have the controller wired to the PlayStation. So it has to be plugged in. If you're using the controller wirelessly, you can only use a wireless headset. So that was a deal breaker for me because that meant that my boy couldn't use it with his wired headset. And he uses these controllers primarily to play games like Fortnite, where he talks to his friends and, you know, Minecraft, stuff like that. So then it was back to the drawing board and I started having another look around and I came across this. Now, I've had a look at the Nacon controllers before, but they've all been wired in the past. And this is the first one I've seen that has been wireless. So I had a look at this and I thought, well, should I get it? And I read various reviews and, you know, there were pros and cons and some people didn't like it. Some people did like it. There were some um, issues with its build quality uh, with one particular viewer I saw where the thumbstick was off centre. But I thought, well, I'll give it a go because that could just be a one off. And I thought if it's a problem, I can always take it back. I just bought it from a local store, so it's not a big deal. But anyway, having said all that, let's get into it and see what it offers. And if you're interested in this, once it's open, if you want to hear any more about it, I'll do a bit more of an in-depth review. But for now, let's just get into it. First things first, the build quality of the box. It, it's nicely packaged. It's not in the same league as the Xbox One Elite controller, which I can show you here. The packaging for this is the top box or the top of the box. The packaging for that is just phenomenal. Everything about it screams premium. Uh, whereas this, it's functional. It's good, it's nice, but it's not on the same sort of league. Once you get it open though, it all looks pretty nice. You've got Nacon Revolution Unlimited. Not a lot else there. Presumably there will be a link to take you to the uh, software because you can change things within software on this one. As you can with a lot of these elite type controllers. Lifting it out of the box though. Again, the box doesn't look as nice as the elite box, but it's perfectly good. 
the actual hard case, and it is a hard case that comes with it though, is rather nice. And even down to the little blue colour around the zip for the PlayStation colours. That's very nice and it's got Nacon on the top and it is premium, it does feel good. Once you get it open, first thing you see is you've got the controller, you've got the little box that control that houses all the little bits and you've got the lead. So let's first off, let's have a look at the lead. And this is a, I believe, a USB-C lead. Let's get it open. And focus. Yeah, that is. That is indeed a USB-C connector. Standard at the other end. And it is pretty, pretty long. I would say round about two meters long. So that's a decent sized lead. And it's, I don't know if you can see that on here, it is a braided cable. So it's all very nice, very premium up to now. Then I'm just gonna lift the controller out for a moment and we'll get to that in a minute. We get to the dongle and you will need this USB dongle to actually use this wirelessly with the PlayStation. And it's a huge dongle. I don't know if you can tell how big that is, but it's massive. I think somebody who designed this had penis envy or something because uh, <laughs> they definitely were making up for something. But, you know, I'm sure it'll do the job. Looks OK. Could be a bit of a pain for me because I've got my PlayStation in a, in a little drawer thing. Plenty of air around it, but it's a little bit limited for space at the front. Anyway, that's that. And then you've got this, which houses the uh, accoutrements, the extras. So let's get into that. And the first thing you see, again, I don't know if you can see that, you've got weights here. There's two of each. You've got 10 gram, 14 gram, and 16 gram. And they, will go in the handles of the controller itself. Presumably, if I can get that back in. Ooh, doesn't want to go back in. Ah, oh, there you go, it's back in. And yeah, they go in the handles to offer a bit more weight, give it a bit more heft if you prefer a slightly heavier controller. Then you've got the domed thumbsticks, or convex if you prefer. Two of those, one for right and left. And that one, I don't know if you can see, that one's got Nacon written on it. Did the other one have Nacon written on it? Not sure. Nope, the other one doesn't. So one has Nacon written on it, the other one doesn't. And then you have these. Now, with a lot of these premium style controllers, these things are taller and shorter, but not with these. I don't know if you can notice here, but the ones underneath are wider. So they're wider and thinner. And uh, it seems a bit of an odd design choice, but it may work. We'll soon see when I get using the controller. I'll have a play around with it. But those are the extras. But what about the controller itself? Well, first things first, it does feel really nice in the hand. This is kind of a matte effect and it feels it actually feels really nice. I have to say, I'm really impressed with that. The touchpad, it's a little bit more clacky than the one on the uh, PlayStation uh, DualShock 4, but it seems to do the job. And let's be honest, how often do you press this thing? Not very often. Certainly not using it for swipes very often anyway. And then let's have a look at the thumbsticks. Oh, they feel great. I actually really like the feel of those. They really do. They've got a real nice feel to them. Now, obviously, it'll depend on your preference. You may prefer slightly stiffer or looser, but I think they feel really pleasant. And obviously, it all comes down to how well they work when you're actually using them to play a game, but they feel great. Buttons feel 
they feel pretty similar to the standard PlayStation ones as far as I can remember. Not too different to the Xbox ones either. But yeah, that all feels cool. The button press on there is good as well. Thumbs, thumb pad, I should say. Joy pad, or however you want to call it. That feels okay. This isn't replaceable like it is on some of these things. It's just a standard one. You can change it from four-way to eight-way though. And then you've got the PlayStation button. Now, the PlayStation button, as far as I'm aware, you can't use it to turn on the PlayStation, which is a bit of a pain in the neck because with the Brook controller, you can actually, well, the Brook adapter, you can actually press the Xbox button and it will turn the PlayStation on. So why these third party controllers don't allow it, I don't know. And if it does, I will post in the comments and let you know that it actually does work. But as far as I'm aware, it doesn't. So yeah, and then you've got your, you know, your standard, you've got share button and whatever this one's called these days, used to be called start. Can we see it on there? There you go. <laughs> there you go, options. Options and start. And these lights here, these show you, you've got on the back, let's just go around to the back briefly. On here, I don't know if you can see that, you've got your profile. And as you press your profile button, you've got four different profiles you can load up onto this, and it should go through and light up to show you which profile you're on, uh, which is handy. And that's uh, two extra profiles over a lot of these controllers, which usually offer two. So that's nice to have the, the four. And you can also use it, I think you press and hold, maybe you press and hold this one, I'm not sure which one, but one of these you press and it'll actually show you your battery level, which is nice as well. So that's the front of it. What about these buttons here? You've got your left and right. They feel okay, a bit clacky, but some nice tactile feedback, they feel okay. Nothing wrong with those. And the triggers, I really like the triggers on this. They feel very similar to the Xbox triggers, which I much prefer to the PlayStation triggers. So that's a plus. So that's really nice. So then on the back we have, first things first, that's something that's missing. There are no trigger stops. You can actually set up trigger stops in software, apparently. And so presumably you'll be able to set it up at 25%, 50%, 75%, whatever. So it actuates earlier. So if you're playing shooters, you could have it actuate sort of there or all the way down, however you want it. Uh, obviously, playing driving games, you want it to be analog all the way down to give you that sort of gradiated control, if that's such a word. But yeah. So yeah, I would like to have seen uh, hard trigger stops, but you know, it's a small thing. The next thing, obviously I've shown you the profile button. And then on here, you've got wired and wireless. So you can set it wired and wire wireless, depending on where you have the button set. And then on here, you can set it to work with PC. And then there's two, I don't know why, why there's two other sec uh, others here. So it's got three positions. One of them's PC. I'm not sure what the other two do but I'll have a look at that when I'm playing around with it. Then you've got volume controls on here. I don't know if you can see that. Volume controls and whatever the one in the middle is, maybe mute or whatever for your headset, which is quite handy. And uh, then the ubiquitous extra buttons. And these you can assign to the face buttons and the triggers and all the rest of it, like you can with most of these elite style controllers. And how does that feel in the hand? That one. Don't really like that one. The first one, I don't like the placement. And it feels a bit hard to push. The one nearer the back of the controller, that feels much more comfortable and more likely something I might use. Not sure I'd be able to use this one. I prefer the way it's laid out on the Xbox Elite controller. Yeah, mm, don't like that. Certainly the left one. I don't know whether the left one's got less feedback or what, but I don't, yeah, I don't like that. 
But I like the second one. That seems to be fair enough. I could be, I could play with that quite happily. But we'll see what it's like when I actually get playing with it. Uh, the other thing, these pull off. So you can put the concave ones on. Sorry, the, the convex ones on. And you can do that on both sides. Ooh, it's a bit stiff. There you go. That comes off. And then once you've got those off, you can lift these off as well and replace it with the ones that are in there. So that's something to play around with as well. Put that back on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're a bit of a pain to get it on and off. Not as good as the Elite controller. It's not too bad though. The click on the thumbsticks, that's fine as well. But again, you don't really know until you actually get playing with it. Playing with it. And if you guys want to know more, as I say, let me know in the comments. But for now, I'm quite happy with that. And uh, oh, oh, I will go and have a play with it. But that's me done. I'm going to drink my cup of tea and I will speak to you guys in the next one. Bye.